Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn about the HTML structure. That is nothing but anatomy of the HTML. So let's try to divide the HTML part by part and we'll try to see what each, what each part is responsible for. Let's try to see it in this video. Now this video is anatomy of the HTML. In the previous video, we have learned what is an element, what is a tag and all those things we have learned it, right? Now where, where we actually the tag comes and which part actually the element is, let's try to see. If you try to see an HTML element, a basic HTML element, it will be something like this. So this is an HTML element. The total, the starting opening of the P tag to the closing of the T, P tag, we will, we call it as an element. So the element comprises of opening tag middle one content and the last one is the closing tag. So this is these three parts comprises of uh, we call it as an element. Now the first one is an opening tag in between my cat is very grumpy. So this is a content and the last one is a closing tag. So these are the three things com consists of we call it as an element. The opening tag this consists of the name of the element. So now if you want to so we know that we are able to understand that this is an element. So what is the name of this element? The tag name what we are having here, the P. So we call it this entire thing as an P element. Okay. This consists of the name of the element. In this example, P for paragraph. The name of the element is nothing but a P element. Wrapped in open and closing angle brackets. The name of the element is wrapped in opening and the closing angle brackets. Those nothing but the less than and the greater than symbols. This opening tag marks where the element begins or start to take effect. So that means the opening tag indicates that where the element actually begins and where the actually begin, uh, starts to take effect. In this example, it precedes the start of the paragraph text. Here in this example, the opening tag will tell you that where this actually element, P element starts. So this is the thing I am trying to explain you, the opening tag. And after the opening tag, we have the content. So this is the content of the element. So this is the main content of the element. In this example, it is the paragraph text. If we try to see here, my cat is very grumpy. So this is the content. We call it as a content. Now the last one is a closing tag. If, if we see here, the closing tag. Here, this is the closing tag. How can we say this one is a closing tag? Why? Because this opening tag and closing tag are looking somewhat similar, right? So the main difference between this opening tag and closing tag is nothing but a forward slash. So here if you try, if you add forward slash inside the angle bracket before this name of the element, P element, so we can, we, we call it as a closing tag. So this is the main difference between the opening tag and the closing tag. Now let's try to see about this closing tag. This is the same as the opening tag except that it includes a forward slash before the element name. So this is what we have discussed. So this is same, the closing tag also looks like same like the opening tag only, but it consists of a forward slash before the element name. This marks where the element ends. So the, if you are having a closing tag means, so this will mark you that where is the, where the element ends. That, that is the place where the P element ends. Failing to include a closing tag is a common beginner mistake that can produce peculiar results. So normally if you are a beginner, HTML beginner, so failing to close this tag is a common beginner mistake. So normally it will have, so but it will not show you any error. The HTML will not show you any error, but it can produce some peculiar results, some weird results you may get in the web page output. So that means we should, it is mandatory for you. It is safe for us when you are, you are having an opening tag. It's safe for us to have a closing tag also. Now the element, now the what we can, what I can say, the HTML element, the definition, the element is the opening tag followed by the content and followed by the closing tag. So this is the definition for the element. The HTML element is nothing but the opening tag followed by the content and followed by the closing tag. So now next we learn about this nesting elements. So what is this nesting elements? Elements can be placed within other elements. So the elements which can be placed within other elements, we call it as an nesting elements. This is called as nesting. If we wanted to state that our cat is very grumpy, 
we could wrap the word very in a strong element which means that the word is to have a stronger text formatting i will try to show you so now i want to make this very as a bold so now i can wrap it inside this strong so now here we are having one element p element total p element and inside this p element we are having another element that is nothing but strong element so that means we can have an we can have an element strong element inside a p element so that means element inside an element so we can have multiple elements inside an element so this is nothing but as called as nesting elements so this is the thing i want to explain you so we can add element inside an element that is not nothing no way wrong that one it's correct only but you will have you will be having one right way and also one wrong way of representation i will try to explain you there is a right way and wrong way to do the nesting so there is there is some right way and wrong way to do the nesting in the example above we opened the p element okay we opened the p element then we opened the strong element yes first we opened the p element and next we opened the strong element for proper nesting we should close the strong element first before closing the p element why because inside the p element we have the strong element so before closing the p element it is our necessary or it is our job to close the strong element first before closing the p element so that is the thing i want to explain you we should close the strong element first before closing the p element now the wrong way of representation will be so now the first p element is open now inside this p element we have a strong element now that means it is our responsibility to close this strong element before the closing of this p element now if you come here so the strong element has not been closed but the p element has been closed so that means this is the wrong way of representation after the p element we are closing the strong element so where is the strong strong tag open here it is has open so that means inside the p element so that means the closing tag also should be inside the p element itself so this is the wrong way of representation the right way of representation is the strong element should be inside the p element okay and another one is what i want to discuss is empty elements so not all elements follow the pattern of an opening tag content and a closing tag normally we understood that html element is a combination of opening tag content and the closing tag but we have some of the elements which doesn't follow this pattern some elements consists of a single tag single tag means nothing but opening tag opening tag it does not have a closing tag which is typically used to insert or embed something in the document so these normally these elements are used to insert something in the document for example the image element it embeds an image file onto the page now here if you try to see the example here this is the image tag and here we are having a source this is called as an attribute we will try to learn about this at, uh, this attributes also now here you are having a source and this one it is closed okay so this is an image tag this doesn't have a content and a closing tag so this is this is what is called as we call it as an empty elements so this is all about the html element structure so this is how you will be having the html element structure opening tag followed by the content and followed by the closing tag we call it as an total html element now nesting elements we can have an element inside an element also some some elements are there which does not follow this pattern this pattern this called as an empty elements so this is all what we have learned about this anatomy of an html so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video i will try to give the reply and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you